Hello everyone, thank you for checking out this special episode of Really Dicey. This is Manny, and I'm here with... The architect, uh, lead designer of the RPG engine over at Polydemons. Very happy to be here. Yes, thank you for taking the time to talk to us about this very interesting um, program. Uh, how, how would you describe the RPG engine exactly? So the RPG engine for me is a visual storytelling aid. It is not a, a video game as such. It is purely designed as an immersive VTT that will just help uh, inspire not just the GMs to come up with kind of cool scenarios, but also the players to use the environment as they play to come up with more creative solutions and to just kind of bring your stories to life. Um, it's the core idea of it, yeah. Oh, okay, if, if I may ask, what's the the um, origin of this idea? I, I know um, I'm always intrigued when when artists and developers decide to work on a project and, and mm -hmm. what causes them to lead to that. Um, uh, how did it come to be, this project? Okay, so I am a, a huge fan of video game development. It's it's really my passion. I just like I make like making little prototypes and little projects. And um, throughout the last kind of four or five years, well, now, now about eight years, I've been playing in a variety of D and D campaigns as a player, as a GM. And it got to the stage where I had a bunch of friends who were like, "Yo, we really want to have like a new D and D campaign. Can you be the GM?" So I had a look around and I saw what software there was out there. And I was like, I just want something where I can create really pretty little and then just tell the story and have everyone engaged. And I looked at a couple of things and obviously there's there's kind of three or four kind of big key ones out there, but none of them really just suited what I felt kind of the technology we have compared to the software that was available just didn't match up in my mind. So I, I turned around to my friends and I went, you know what? I'll just make a VTT and then we'll play play on that. And everyone rolled their eyes. And then, um, yeah, here we are three years later with an actual um, we developed VTT. And I've yet to to host that campaign, I promised them. Uh, I've been so busy making it. But it's been great fun. And, um, yeah, so that was kind of sort of really small with a little prototype of just being able to build a map. And it's just grown and grown and grown. So yeah. I, I'm really excited about this because... Um as um, you know, dabbling with Roll20 and Foundry and all those are, are great, great um, systems to, to uh, role play on. Um, it, it, we, we've come across to the point where we're making our 3D models of things. You know, we kind of mm -hmm. want more immersive in our gaming. Um, so uh, I guess first things first, this looks fantastic. Uh, I have to ask, what is the Thank learning you. curve like to use something like this? I, I think that was my struggle with Roll20 and Foundry mm -hmm. because of the time, the limited time I have. Uh, how, how would you say it's a learning curve for this? So if you go in blind, it can just be a little overwhelming. There's a lot of things that can be done, but through kind of community tutorials, I've added some tutorials and we're in the process of kind of constantly refining and optimizing the process. The idea is the basics are very simple. If you want to just have a map, you just want to get your players on and start moving stuff around. You can do that in 10 minutes. You can do that in five minutes. And with kind of the sharing system, it allows you even with very little knowledge of how to make the maps, still have access to a whole variety of different scenarios and scenes and sceneries. Uh, so I'd say it's fairly simple to get into once you've watched in kind of tutorial video, which is about 20 minutes. And then getting more into detail, it's purely just the amount of time you're willing to invest in it. So you can have some maps that are really basic where you've taken a 2D picture as your base as a floor and you just put in some 3D props and have your characters walk around. Or you can go in full detail and put individual helms of grass in it and barrels around the place and like really populate the map to make it feel really alive. So it's down to the individual person, the player, the GM, how kind of what level of detail they'd like. And the higher the level of detail, the more time it'll take. Quite simply. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And, and, and answer and, that or... <laughs> And, and and right now, this is uh, available in Steam currently? Uh, what is it available, available Steam? in Steam? It is, it is already. It has been available in Steam for about a year and a half now um, in early access. And it was in early access for such a long time just to make sure that all the features that players want are in there. Uh, we kind of had a whole debate internally about whether the idea was to have it on early access for a year, build it up build a little community and then say, here you go, here's the game. But as more and more people have kind of gotten to know it and made suggestions and feature ideas, the game's just grown and grown. And it got to the stage where we said, well, it's never really going to be finished. And we'll always be developing it to some degree, but we need to like draw a line and say, hey, at this point, it is a fully fledged product that you can use from start to finish to run your campaigns. And at that point, we can say it's fully launched with um, plenty of updates still to come. Oh, okay. And, and, uh, how how many is this something that only for is this only for game masters can other players participate in this as well like is it um 
is it a, a program where uh, people can come in and act, even if they can't create, they can move things around? How does, how does interaction work exactly? So the, the, the basic form is a bit like traditional um, VTTs and RPG, uh, well, TTRPGs, where the players have their characters, they can move the characters around, and the GM is in control of the rest of the things. In this case, I want it to be as freeform as possible. I really like the idea of homebrew and not just having dedicated systems. So the whole thing is geared to having multiple GMs. If you want to have a player control an inanimate object, just assign them that inanimate object. So we don't look in the game, uh, like on the game itself, we don't look at it as there are characters and assets. Everything is treated the same. So if you want a character to be an inanimate, like a chair that can move around the map, then assign them the chair and they can move it around the map. If you want a character to have control of like complete control of the building itself or sculpting the terrain as they go, because that's something that they just happen to need or you want assistance while, while playing, then that is really easy to do. Just right click, assign full control. And um, yeah, the idea is really to just say, hey, do you want to just build maps together? You can do that. You want to have one dedicated map builder and one storyteller? You can do that. You want to have everyone get involved and be able to do everything? You can totally do that. It's whatever you need for your system is or should work in the game. And if it doesn't work, then drop us a line on Discord and we'll make it work. <laughs> um, what about the interactions with like, the, you mentioned a little bit that you, you can move the, the buildings around and, and items mm -hmm. around and so forth. Um, what about like the NPCs or the villains? Um, what kind of uh, options are available for that right now? So right now we have, I think there's around 40 different animation sets um, for, for all the characters. So there's some animals in there there's some entities in there and by entities i mean miniatures so there's a custom character creator where you can stylize the clothes you can put on different armor pieces um you can make any character hold anything so you can drag weapons on you could make a person lift a car for all for all like you know <laughs> if you wanted to um it is it's designed to just be that little bit more immersive so instead of picking up a, a mini and moving it somewhere you click where you want it to go and it'll walk there by itself We've got dance animations, we've got combat animations, there's special magic effects and click effects. So over time, it's really just come from this basic system of just move some tokens around to, hey, these characters walk, they can dance, they can attack, they can emote. So it's all around just being able to tell more of an immersive story in a simpler way as possible. So there's talk animations. You say, hey, you walk up to the counter and the bartender's having a nice conversation with someone. You can put them both into that talk animation loop and you can see what's going on in the world instead of just being told what's going on in the world. Hmm. What about setting options? Um, I, it looks like from here, like uh, from what I've seen so far, uh, it looks like, like a fantasy setting. It's probably mm -hmm. the, uh, the most common one people use it for. Um, but uh, uh, what options do you have for like, let's say if someone needs to do like a futuristic setting or a modern setting, or it's some form of variation of, the, of a, 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 a past time period? Mm. So right now we have just shy of, I think 10,000 different assets. And the um, and by assets I mean buildings and chairs and blocks and characters and just a variety of things and they range from pirates to um, uh, old western to future sci-fi to modern day you can set up a town there's modern vehicles there's old vehicles there's there's spaceships um, and there's a lot of kit bashing the whole system is really designed to say hey if we don't have what you need or you want we well, can combine different props and you can use that as a singular prop. So it's called prefabbing in the in 3D modeling, um, but you can make prefabs out of all the different things. And then with the workshop sharing system, it really allows you to just say, hey, I need a, a, a sci-fi speeder bike that has some jets coming out the back. Then either you can take your normal bike and you can put jets all over it, or you can go on the workshop and say, hey, sci-fi bike. And there's a bunch of prefabs made by other like community members that allow you to do that. We're still in the back end here. We've got another, I think, 8,000 assets still to go in. Uh, more modern stuff um there is some we've got a whole elvish pack that that needs to go in but it's just you know about time and priorities but over the next kind of year or so i'm expecting the amount of assets we have to probably just about double um and just open up even more possibilities for different scenarios but the the core things right now are fantasy modern and sci-fi with a little sprinkling of other stuff in between oh okay when it comes to incorporating um, uh, different rule systems, whether it be D and D five E, Pathfinder, and so forth, um, how is it? Is this something where, outside of it, you have to kind of implement the rules yourself, or is it? Is there like a way to implement the rules in kind of like how Foundry does it sometimes, or Roll Twenty? Um, how does that work exactly? 
So we came up with a, um, a custom kind of player sheet system. The idea was because obviously we've looked at all these other, other systems and how they do it and the best way to do it. And oftentimes we find it's not very intuitive on how to actually create all these things. You need to know a little bit of scripting and all that. So um, we sat down and said, okay, how can we make this as user-friendly for people where, hey, you want to play D&D? Cool. There's already D&D sheets and they're shared on the workshop by community members. If you want to do your homebrew thing, you can create those as well. You just drag boxes. It's a bit like an Excel where you say, hey, when I press this roll button, I want these three fields to roll the dice. And it will physically spit those dice out for you or your players in the game. You can see them land and it will like post the results in the chat box. So it is designed to be like as simple as possible. There's also a tutorial that goes with that that, that you can watch. Um, but it's as simple as create some fields, reference them, which is just click on one field, click on the button and say that field is now referenced by that button and away you go. And again, everything we do, whether it's the prefabs, the map making or the, the document system, everything's shareable on the workshop. So we already have a lot of documents for Parsec, for D&D, &D, Pathfinder, there's some stuff. So there's a variety of player sheets that are already there. There's a variety that are on the way and anything that's not there can be fairly simply made. If I may ask about the dice thing, um, because mm -hmm. I, I find it intriguing. I mean, I love collecting dice. Mm -hmm. um, and I've noticed that there's a, a growing community of people that love collecting um, uh, virtual dice. Really? That makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, um, with, especially with D&D Beyond, they, they offer like these, um, yeah. uh, this, these dice sets. And I'm like, oh, okay, no one's going to be into that. So it's, it's virtual, you know, but yeah, yeah. You know, I'm wrong. I was wrong yeah. about that. Um, does, does, um, are, when it comes to dice, what does RPG Engine... I guess, offer at the moment? So at the moment, we've got a basic set of dice um, that you, you normally find, the D2 up to D20. And um, the customization at the moment is you can change the edge color, the face color, and the number color. And that's just for now to differentiate between different players. Or if you say, hey, this is a special dice, I want this D20 specifically always to have like this little yellow glow. That's the thing. We have um, we've had a few requests from the community to add like completely custom dice, and that would range from either just being able to put your own texture on it or even to have different symbols on the dice. And that would open up obviously a whole new set of um, TTRPGs that become accessible through that. So it's on our to-do list. Um, it's not implemented yet, um, but right now what is implemented is the ability to change the colors of your own personal dice to kind of say, hey, the, those dice are my dice. Mm. And, and monster customization. Um, once in a while, I'll, I'll have... Um... A story scenario where maybe I may need to change like a color of a dragon randomly mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how how immersive is your monster creation tool set? Uh, so the monster creation tool set, it, it a lot of users so far have used the prefab system where they've created a like essentially a static token, um, like a beholder or something where they've got tentacles coming out of everywhere, and that seems to work really well. Things like dragons, we have animated dragons in the game, we have a bunch of animated animals, uh, we'd like to add some more monsters, but in terms of colouring right now, every item in the game can be tinted. So if you say you have these two different, um, whether that is dragons, whether that is, um, you know, two different brick walls that you want to make match, uh, anything, you have a little slider and you can say, I want this, this colour, and then just drag, drag the slider up how much you want that colour to affect that prop. So um, that also applies to a lot of this, the special effects we have where if you have like some fire blazing there, but actually you want that to be purple fire, the same thing applies, just click on purple and just drag that slider up and it will make the fire purple. Hmm. Um, what does one need to run the system? The, um, I know with somebody, um, I won't mention my name, the virtual tabletop, but some of them, my uh, I've had players that may have some difficulty, they may need to upgrade their system in order to play properly. Mm -hmm. um, for something like this, um, what, um, what what do you feel is necessary? System requirements. So this whole game, off the bat, we've been very pernickety about making it run on as as, as basic hardware as possible. Um, we do have something called a potato mode, which is, you know, if you, you're running on a, a practical potato, put it on potato mode and it should run on most things. I've got it running on a 2011 Mac Mini. Um, so if it can run on that, it runs on right most things. If you have a a graphics card, you know a ten a ten seventy, that will run it perfectly fine. Um, even an old laptop will run it. It's varying depending on how big the maps are, how detailed the GM goes. If the GM's aware, hey, some of my players don't have very good hardware, you can instead of use a, a map where there's sculptable terrain, use a flat map, which is just like less resource intensive. So there are definitely ways around it. 
And in our experience so far, unless you're really like overloading the map with props, the performance has been phenomenal, um, which we're really happy about because we spend a lot of time making sure it's accessible to as many people as possible. And it also runs on Mac because we're aware that on for a lot of the people that's, you know, we want everyone to play, <laughs> not just mm -hmm. the, the PC users. Yeah. What what are your input and export options? Uh, I have I, I know one player in particular that mm -hmm. likes to uh, make stuff on um, some sort of virtual tabletop, but likes to print it out uh, okay. for for their convention games. Yeah. Um. Uh, what what options do you have exactly? Okay. So our import options are you can import two D images as either just entire images for maps. You can slap that onto flags. You can um we like do cutout tokens. If you have a character that you want specifically in the game or a creature you want in the game, but there is no three D version of it, you can just take a, a PNG, put it in the game, and it'll cut it out automatically. Look like a little cardboard token on a stand. You can move around. Um. So that's that option. You, we've got Hero Forge importing um not officially <laughs> like we've been trying to contact hero forge but we've we've managed to to get their system running on our game and um we also have some obj importing so 3d models 2d things can all go in the game we are looking at something i really want to work on down the road is uh, more modding possibilities so that people can create 3d objects in blender put them into unity and then that would allow like animation import as well so you can make completely custom animated creatures and that, again, with the workshop sharing like ability would just expand what's available to everyone, and that'd be great. So that's on our to-do list. Um, for export right now, you can take any of your 3D maps. You can do a 2D render of them. We've got an indie 2D renderer from top down or isometric. So if you want to create maps in the RPG engine, export them and use them in a different system, that's totally available. Uh, unfortunately, 3D export, it will break some of the terms and conditions we have with some of our art creators. So as much as I would like to, uh, it's not something I can like make accessible to people. However, there have been isolated instances where people have made like really gorgeous prefabs and they're like, look, I just want this so I can 3D print it out for myself. And if someone approaches me with that, then usually I go, hey, that's fine. Here you go, because I can rip it out on my end, um, but it's not publicly accessible. Hmm. Has there been anything you've, you've made personally map wise that you're the most proud of using RPG Engine? all the maps I make like I it's just it's so much fun I'm a creative I, I before I started programming and getting into game development I was a 3d artist so the ability to make things on the fly like you get so carried away you have an evening where you're like hey I'm just going to make this small map you have an idea in your head and then it's five six hours later and you have this gorgeous thing with all this detail and the lighting effects and it's um I find it extremely fun but I would, I would do I mean I made a game for myself didn't I <laughs> so um yeah I, I really enjoy making maps and there's there's a whole handful of maps that i could share with you and um yeah also the, like but it's really rewarding seeing what the community come up with as well because it's all based on this kind of communal share what you make make it accessible to other people there's there's map makers where i just can't compete with they just make mm. these absolutely stunning maps and um that's really nice to see i love that when someone posts a new map and says check this out and we're like wow you made that with what we made that's awesome that's great um, yeah, inspiring creativity. <laughs> well, excellent. Is, is there, um, before we talk about when this will this be officially released, mm -hmm. uh, is there any last words you want to share about this? Um, I just want to make it really clear we're very community based. Uh, I think the reviews we have reflect that as well, where because we're all gamers and um, the, over the last few years, kind of how the games industry has been in relationship to like the, the developers and the players we think that things shouldn't be the way they are we think that developers should be really open and hey we're all in this together we're making a good game for you guys to enjoy and for us to enjoy and if you guys have great ideas we are so willing to hear it and want to implement them so if anyone's listening to this and they have any ideas on what makes a vtt great or you know how to get it that little bit more pep and spark into it let us know on the discord um we will look at the ideas we'll read everything uh, we're very active on there and we we love feedback so together we can make something awesome mm. And I'll put a link to the Discord group um, in the description below. So, so yes. Yeah, so, so when will this be out officially? Okay. So the official release day is the eighth of September, twenty twenty three. That is in five days from now, or four days from now. Um, super exciting. And uh, really, it doesn't change too much in terms of the development for us because we're still working on this full time. Um, it is just that as the point we said, hey, 
let's get let's actually have an official release it's the first game polydemons is releasing and um let's just make it all official and we think it's ready for everyone to enjoy fully and anything on top of it is going to be a an awesome bonus but as a standalone game it works so why not call it released mm. well, excellent well thank you so much architect for taking the time to uh, share with us about the rpg engine um again i'll put a link for that in the description as well um and uh to our viewers thank you so much for watching be safe out there we'll see you next time